As much as I enjoy printing all types of models, by far my favorite are functional. From storage and organization to jigs and fixtures, 3D printing is a great tool for making things that are specific. We recently moved into our own place and my studio is now upstairs. Well, our son is just a few days shy of turning one and he is a curious George that wants to explore everything, including upstairs. We have a baby gate, but the wall connectors for it left an impression in the drywall at the previous place, which is something I'd like to avoid repeating. Last month, I received a couple rolls of Soraya Tech's first line of filament, which happens to be an 85A TPU. This should be perfect for creating caps to go over the existing parts. In this video, we'll take a look at this new TPU and what's needed to print with it while we create a functional part. I need to get this done right away, so with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting with the TPU, as mentioned, this is the first line of filament from Soriatech. If you're not resin printing, you might not be familiar with them, but we've covered a handful of their resins over the years. They've been known to make some pretty unique engineering resins, which lends perfectly to them deciding to make their debut with a polyurethane. The filament is currently available in both black and white, and has a shore hardness rating of 85A. We've covered this in previous videos, but a shore hardness rating is simply a measure of the resistance a material has to indentation. The most common scales are shore OO, shore A, and shore D. It's worth noting that shore OO scale has a softer range, while shore D has the hardest range. A rating of 85A is much softer than a rating of 85D. Due to the limitations of extrusion-based 3D printing, I personally don't think I've seen a TPU softer than 60A, but typically the range you'll see TPUs in is somewhere between 85 and 95A. I won't spend too much time on the TDS, but both mechanical and thermal information is available on their website for anyone interested, or feel free to pause the video to look at the data further. Now let's talk about what goes into printing with this material. Just five years ago, I'd have dreaded trying to print with 85A TPU, but thanks to improvements in printer hardware, this is a much easier feat. I'll be using my trusty Ender 3 V2 that we upgraded with the Micro Swiss NG Revo toolhead combo. For the extruder, I highly recommend using a direct drive setup. I've printed TPU a handful of times on a Bowdoin config, and it's almost always been an uphill battle. Pushing a soft elastic filament through a tube to your hot end is just not a good time and leads to clogs and jams. You want direct drive with as short of a filament path as possible. Many of the older extruders had quite a bit of open space before and or after the gears, which is something you really don't want. With soft filaments, if there is an alternative route that they could possibly go, believe me, they will figure out how to get there. Also, although this is common for most extruders, you want one that allows you to adjust the tension on the filament. While rigid filament requires some bite into them to feed reliably, flexible filament will get torn through or wrap around your extruder gears. To avoid this, back off on the tension. How much will vary from extruder to extruder, but I typically run a test print a few times while backing off a bit more each time until I'm getting consistent extrusion. For the hot end, I'm using a Revo fitted with the standard 0.4 brass nozzle. Unless your TPU is glow in the dark or contains another abrasive additive, brass nozzles work fairly well. You don't need anything special for the hot end as you'll be printing at fairly conservative speeds, but as always, something reliable is recommended. Temperature wise, the range for printing this filament is 200 to 225 Celsius, so you do not need an all metal hot end. Moving on to the bed, I have a powder-coated PEI Wham Bam bed on here. Powder-coated PEI is my recommendation by far, but you can also get away with something like glass and glue stick, or if you want to go really old school, even blue painter's tape will work fairly well. What I don't recommend printing on is smooth PEI or something like a build tack sheet. TPU practically bonds with these, and even if you use a bit of glue stick as a release agent, I still think it's risky. The bed temp range for this filament is 20 to 50 Celsius. I went with 50 C and the adhesion was so good I probably could have gone with much lower, but I prefer too much stick over too little. TPU is also one of those filaments that regardless of your location and what you're used to, I always recommend drying it. Even with this coming vacuum sealed, I took it out and threw it into the IBOS Polyphemus for a couple of hours at 60 Celsius before running my first print. 
I like to print directly from the dryer when possible, but due to the softness of this filament, I noticed a fair bit of drag even when using a Bowden guide tube. I tried a handful of different spool holders, including a few that have bearings inside of them, and I actually found that the just stock Ender spool holder mounted on top of the printer, since it's a direct drive, gave me the least amount of friction. When it comes to speed, I say this with every single filament we test out, but I recommend at least starting off very slow. This holds even truer when printing with a TPU like this. Soriotech gives a range of 30 to 90 millimeters per second, and I stuck with 40 as my cap. Could I have gone faster? Sure, I don't doubt that I could have scaled things up, but unless you're optimizing for something like production, in my opinion, slow and steady is usually the better route to go. The last thing on the printing side is retraction. Too much retraction with flexible filaments is an issue due to its elasticity. If you retract beyond a certain point, you'll get an under extrusion, a clog, or both. I usually don't go above one millimeter retraction distance, which does mean I have some stringing, but I'd much rather have that than filament jams. For the part I need to print, it's super simple. The rubber covers that push up against the wall have a pattern in them that applies all of the holding force to that pattern. My plan is to print caps with no pattern that will go over them, spreading the force across their entire surface area. To do this, I grabbed my digital calipers and measured the diameter of the rubber covers along with their height. I measured the diameter at 34 millimeters and the height at roughly 7.25 millimeters. Hopping into Shaper 3D, I created a sketch of a circle at 34.2 millimeters to give me a little bit of wiggle room to press the cap on. I then added a three millimeter offset for the walls, extruded three millimeters to give the cap a bit of thickness and extruded the walls exactly 7.25 in the opposite direction so that they would sit in line with the top of the part. In my initial test, I noticed a slight elephant's foot, so I added a tiny 0.2 millimeter chamfer to the bottom of the part. I tried to think of ways that I could make this print or this model just a little bit more elaborate, but honestly, for what I needed, this simple print was perfect. I printed out the first two with just one on the plate at a time to make sure everything went smoothly, then threw the last two on together. This turned out fine, but due to the temperature and short retraction, having two led to a little more cleanup of strings. The caps fit on snug and the texture from the powder coated PEI gives the part a very subtle bit of grit that for my intended purposes worked out nicely. The gate is now mounted at the bottom of the stairs and until Jackson learns to climb over it, he should be safe for now. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that maybe it inspired you to test out some TPU or even make a functional print for something around your house. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite functional print is. This can be something that you modeled up yourself or just something that you found online that you really liked. For anyone interested in finding out more about Soraya Tech's 85A TPU, I will have a link down below in the description. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I will have a link in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.